In this video, I'm gonna go through a couple of different ways to store your dirty sewer hose and those dirty connectors, including a DIY option. So first of all, there's the plastic four inch bumper. Now, lots of RVs have these four inch bumpers on them, and if you've got one, you can use these modern sewer hose connectors. They flatten the sides, so they just barely fit a four inch bumper, no problem. And even the connector comes apart, comes in two pieces, and this side of the connector can also fit inside the four inch bumpers. They flatten the sides to make it fit. This piece, which is probably the dirtiest piece of all, doesn't fit in the four inch bumper option. So you've got to find some place to store this besides the bumper. Now, another option that's on lots of RVs, comes pre-installed, is one of these sewer hose tubes. One is made by Valterra and the other one is made by DW Inc. They come pre-installed on lots of RVs these days. So if you've got one of these, you can put your big sewer hose connector in there. No problem, fits no problem. These two piece style connectors fit in. This piece fits in. And even this piece fits in. It's made to fit just perfectly. So both adapter pieces fit inside those connectors. So if you've got one of those, you're good to go to store the three pieces, the dirty sewer hose and both sides of this connector. Now, while we were hunkered down for two months, the place we were staying, I needed 40 feet of sewer hose. So when we went to pack up, I had place for 20 feet of my hose in my original tube, but I needed some place to store the other 20 feet. So I looked around online, I had two options. One, I could just install another one of these sewer hose tubes, but I came across a video by RV by Cheeto where he used this five inch fence post that you get from Lowe's or Home Depot, and he screwed it up under his RV, and this way you could hold the adapter connectors, no problem easily, and the sewer hose. And I could actually make it even a little bit longer to be able to hose, hold a 20 foot hose and the connectors all in one. So if you're into a DIY option, stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to use this five inch fence post, cut it, screw it up onto the RV on the I-beams, make these caps to hold your hose in place, and a securing pin with a cotter pin, so make sure it doesn't go anywhere. You won't be surprised, but Larry whacked his head again and we got a picture to prove it. I just patch it up afterwards, I don't even ask. He's doing his old DIY thing, he's crawling under the RV, and if it has anything to do with the black tank or sewer hoses, no, I don't go anywhere near that stuff. In the years that we've had RVs since like 2012, I don't think Alice has even touched a sewer hose or a connector or had anything to do with the black tank. Uh, I'm not sure what the black tank is, where it is, or what the sewer hose even looks like. I do clean the toilet though, so. And yes, I think it's time that I like get him a helmet or just bubble wrap him, <laughs> I don't know. So welcome back, we're being crazy again. But if you're new, I'm Alice. And I'm Larry. And we're Downsizing Makes Sense Like the Penny. And we went full time mid-February in our Grand Design Solitude. And we're fixing and moving and doing crazy stuff. Now I'm gonna get to doing a list of the supplies and parts you're gonna need to do the DIY part. And then we get right into doing the DIY. Supplies you'll need for this project are five inch by five inch by eight foot vinyl fence post times one five inch by five inch fence post caps times two, number 14 times one inch self-drilling self-tapping screws times four, a quarter inch by one inch stainless steel washers times four, three eighths by 36 inch aluminum rod times one, 0.093 inch by one and five eighths inch hitch pins times two. Tools that are needed, measuring tape, safety glasses, an impact driver, power drill, Drill bits 1 8 and 3 8 a large bore drill bit 7 8 to 1 inch, a 3 8 inch socket with a ratchet, a 6 inch or longer ratchet extension, 1 quarter inch hex shank to 3 8 inch ratchet adapter, a hacksaw or an available power saw, and a Dremel is nice to have but it's not necessary. I was mounting my 5x5 DIY tube beside the D&W tube that came on the RV. I had to move that down a little bit to be able to make space 
between the spare tire and the bumper. When I first moved the D&W tube, I did not have these support containers in place and I ended up dropping it right on my forehead, creating a big lump. So make sure you use something to support the tube when installing it. Once I had the tube in place, I just measured it for how long I wanted it to be and then transferred that mark all the way around the edge of the tube to cut it. The only power saw I had in the RV was this jigsaw, but I could have just used my hand hacksaw. It's very thin vinyl material, it cuts very easily. After I cut the tube to length, I measured the distance on the frame, I-beam to I-beam, and then transferred those marks to the tube to drill the holes. Now I double checked the distance to make sure it was right, and then I started making marks on the tube where I was gonna put the holes. I had about an inch and a half of frame material to work with, so I just marked that frame section out on the tube and then marked holes one inch from the sides and made sure I used equal distance from the edge of the tube. Now I'm gonna drill these holes with a quarter inch drill bit. Then I'm gonna flip the tube over and make marks on the opposite side of the tube for the access holes for the ratchet driver and make sure that these are the exact same spots as the quarter inch holes on the other side. Now I couldn't find my one inch drill bit at the time so I just used a half inch drill bit and, and then I just made the holes a little wider with my Dremel. I'm just demonstrating here how I'm going to use these access holes and an extension on my impact driver with a hex bit and how I'm going to drill that screw through the tube and into the I-beam. Now we just line up the tube along the frame moving the holes along the I-beam where I want them to drill into the I-beam, making sure I know where those screws are gonna go when they go through the I-beam. Make sure they're not gonna hit any plumbing or tanks or wires. This is where using a powerful 20 volt impact driver would really help. I only had these 12 volt versions so I had to switch back and forth between a drill and the impact driver to drill into the steel. Now you can see here where I'm using the impact driver to finish off and snug these screws all the way into the steel I-beam. Now I switch over the other side and go through the same procedure. Again, making sure as I drill into the I-beam, I'm not hitting anything above like wires or plumbing. This is where I use a ratchet and extension and a 3 8 inch socket to final tighten all four screws to make sure it's nice and snug. I start working on the locking pin by bending a 90 degree angle into this 3 8 inch aluminum rod. I'm just using my pin box here because I don't have a vise on the RV. This aluminum is very soft and bends easily and won't damage my pin box. I make a 6 inch mark on the rod and then I cut it with my Dremel. I could have easily have just cut this with my mini hacksaw. I finish up the ends on the rod by using the barrel sander on my Dremel and also shape the ends to make it a little easier to enter the holes. I use the barrel sander on the Dremel again to create a little flat spot on the side of the rod. It'll just make it a little easier to drill the 1 8 inch hole for the locking pin. After drilling, I just test fit the hitch pin to make sure it goes in easily and holds snugly. Here you can see the finished product with the rounded ends of the locking pins and the holes that are drilled. I put a cap in place on the end of the 5x5 tube and drill a 3 8 inch hole on each side. I use the drill to remote the holes so that the 3 8 inch locking pin that we made will go in easily. Here's a look at the finished product of the 5x5 DIY sewer hose tube in place, snugged up there against the D&W sewer hose tube that came with the RV. I used this little six inch piece of pool foamy pushed into the tube. This helps keep the connectors from getting pushed down the tube if I don't have a hose in there. It's very easy to use. You just pull the hitch pin, pull out the locking pin, put your sewer hose in or take it out and lock it back up again. It's very spacious and a nice DIY project for your RV. Okay, everybody, vote. Helmet or no helmet? No helmet. I had will be fine. Mm. I can withstand a couple more blows. Anyways, thanks for watching this video and checking out the different ways to store your sewer hose and my DIY option.
Now, if you've got a different way to store your dirty sewer hose that I didn't include in this video, or something you do that's different than what I showed here, please leave a comment. If you've got a different DIY solution, I wanna hear that too. If there's something about my DIY solution you think that you can make better or have something to add to it, please also leave that in the comments. Now we make lots of these types of videos. We make some DIY, some traveling, kind of journey to the full-time lifestyle. And if you're interested in that kind of content, please consider subscribing down here. And I'm gonna leave a link to a playlist of some more of our DIY type stuff up over here. I think it's over here, right there, right there. Anyways, thanks again for watching and remember, downsizing still makes sense.